Pray the Lord, brethren, God is good. And praise him again. Welcome to the program. The program is finding God. And finding God means that when you find him, he is life. And this program improves us as individuals. It improves you as a person. Finding God improves your relationship with others. And finding God improves your relationship with God. And so it is important that we keep diving into scripture. The scripture is the word of God. And just like I mentioned many times, we have known and we have read that Christians are the people of the book. And so here, the word of God states very clearly how we can be improved and how we can improve our relationship with other people and how we can improve our relationship with God. Now, the person that I want to share about this time is a man called Jethro. Jethro has a very beautiful story. In Exodus chapter 18, and we begin reading at verse 1. I just want to read a few verses in chapter 18 of Exodus. I'm introducing the man called Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. And remember Moses was the leader of God's people from Egypt to the Promised Land. And now, along the way, a few things happened, but there needed it to be energizement. There needed to be encouragement. There needed to be advice. There needed to be someone to come in to, to come in and help move things forward. Now, along the way, these people were, you know, having lots of things that they were doing, and Moses as a leader had so many things to do. And now here, in Exodus chapter 18, the Bible says that Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people. How the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken Zipporah. Zipporah was Moses' wife. And Moses had two sons. And so the father-in-law came with his daughter and his two grandchildren. And the two grandchildren, in verse 3, one is called Gershom. Gershom, for Moses said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. And then the, next, the name of the other one was Eliezer. Eliezer, for Moses said that God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Now, this was the team, Jethro, his daughter Jeff, Zipporah, and the two sons of Moses, Gershom and Eliezer. They move to come and meet Moses, find him wherever he was, and he was at his task leading the people of Israel into the promised land. Now, in verse 5, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife in the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. And verse 6, he sent word that he wanted to talk to Moses. And in verse 7, the Bible says, Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law the successes the challenges, the setbacks of the journey. And they talked very many things. And Moses kept recounting what God had done for them in the wilderness, the period of time that had moved from Egypt to where they were. And in verse 9, the Bible said that Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done for Israel, in that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro the father-in-law blessed the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh 
and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. And he confessed, Jethro confessed, now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Because in this affair, they dealt arrogantly with the people. Now friends, this story is a powerful story of the father-in-law who hears about the great thing that the Lord had done. And he goes to meet his son, who was the leader. And he moves with the family, says, let's go and meet your father, telling the children, let's go and meet your husband, telling Zipporah. And here they are. And Moses is at his work. And so, friends, I have read through, and I know you can also read it through, and you have read it through many times, and many people have preached about this portion, but the lessons that we derive from this as people who are living in this generation, you know, the advice itself that Jethro gave to Moses when you turn to page to verse 13, you know, this portion from verses 1 to 12, it is actually recounting what God had done and jubilating in God's goodness and exchanging pleasantries, asking about their welfare. And it was nice. It was a nice story. And in the second part, that's the verse 13 following, it's about, uh, you know, the advice that actually Jethro gave to Moses when he was busy at the seat of judgment, doing everything by himself. Now, this is the point that we're making, my brothers and sisters, as we, we read through the word of God, the important lessons that we pick from this. And one thing that I want to bring out very, very clearly is about the importance of family. The importance of family, and this portion of scripture addresses fathers. This portion of scripture addresses wives, because Zipporah was, Zipporah was. If we talk about fathers, Moses was, even Jethro himself was. This portion of scripture addresses the family where there's father, mother, and their children. This portion of scripture addresses the working parents. And of course, actually, you know, that actually during our time, there are many things that are happening because we must work. Yes, we must sustain our families. Yes, we must look after them, take care of them, involved in very, many, many things. But this person of scripture addresses that kind of busy parents. And what the father-in-law does, he carries the wife and the children to Moses and says, let's go and meet your father and meet your husband. So we need to remind ourselves to have regard for family. And Jethro knew the secret here. The reason he brings the wife, he brings the children. And... He shows it by example, by bringing them to Moses. And meaning, friends, that actually work must be done, but alongside the family. Very, very important point, very, very important, something that actually we need to learn. And I address working parents, that actually work must be done alongside the family, and Jethro brings this one out very, very clearly. Because the family is a whole institution that was instituted by God himself. The reason why he created Adam and brought him a wife called Eve. And through their relationship, joining them together, there was a family that was created, they had children. And so here, a family being an, a whole institution, Jethro brings out the point that actually working parents, working fathers, need to work alongside the family. We know that actually work to look after our family, to take care of their needs, to take care of their, you know, of their school fees, the school requirements, their general welfare, very important. But we need to do that alongside. Yes, we need to look to work, but alongside family. Our presence is what we are addressing here. Daddy presence, father presence in the family. It's very, very important. And just through new how important the father can be. And so the reason why he brings these children, come and see your father. Brings this lady, Zipra, go and see your husband. So the presence of a parent in a home and the father-parent 
here is actually critical because actually he was the one who was away. And so, friends, we discovered actually this portion of scripture unveils this and it addresses fathers, it addresses mothers, it addresses parents who are working, but working should go alongside family. Very, very important. And one other thing that actually uh, that I discover from this is that actually God's works are hard and are spread. You see, in verse 1, that actually Jethro had about what God had done. And so Jethro had, and so when he had, he came to witness what God had done. And so I pray for you and I pray for myself that actually whatever we do, that God's hand may be in it. And when the, the low hand of the Lord is in it, we no, do much more. And that actually these good works can be heard by other people. Are you in a certain office? Are you in a certain position? Are you in a certain whatever it is that God's hand may be in it and so that people can hear about the good that you have done. Like Jethro had and he said and told Moses, actually we had and listened to me. The father in law rejoiced over the good that I the Lord had done for Moses, that actually what God had done for Moses and for the whole entire Israel. I treasure it. I enjoy it when I read verse 1. That actually what God had done for Moses and for the people of Israel. And so also pray that actually in our different positions of leadership, that God may be do something, may do something for you as an individual. Are you a manager? Are you an admin assistant? Are you a sweeper? Are you a whoever? in whichever capacity that you are, that God can do something for you and for the people that are with you. And this is something that actually I discover from this portion of scripture in finding God, that actually it improves you. Finding God improves you, improves your relationship. Yes, improves you as a person, but also improves you with other people that actually God has put in charge. Put you to look after, you know, you could be up here, but you're looking after people, but also down here, you're looking after those people that are above you. And so this is very, very important, friends, that actually what you do, what God enables you to do may be hard. And I'm praying that actually what I do at my workplace, what I do may be hard. The good that I do, that actually someone will come. It also reminds me of Solomon. You know, Solomon was a very wonderful man. He did great things for Israel. But someone heard about what Solomon did, and this was the Queen of Sheba visited to see what Moses, I mean, what Solomon had done. And so I pray for you that you'll do something and someone will hear it and come and praise God because of what God has used you to do in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is very, very important for me, and it's also important for you. Another thing that actually we discover from here is that actually parents care for the welfare of their children. Now, you know, we educate our children. Those of us who are parents, and of course, we are someone's parent, we are someone's child also, wherever you are working. But being busy is now the order of the day. Sometimes you go, you are busy all over the place, and the year elapses, <laughs> your parent, you have not seen each other. But thank God for technology now, that wherever you are, you communicate with them, you, you virtually interact with them. And so that's important. But parents care for the welfare of their busy children as well. And this is an appeal to the parents also to call on them. You know, make a phone call, visit them. It's important too that actually Jethro took... Um, an initiative and visited his son in law. So visitation is important. Shall we encourage ourselves to keep visiting one another? Especially actually, um, this one addresses the parents. I mean, maybe the reason, even the reason why in schools you hear about visitation days and things like that. So this is actually critical. That actually parents taking care of their busy children and it is important. Visitation, and one other thing is, Visiting your subordinates at one moment, it improves their efficiency when you come around. Moses, I mean, just was a priest in Midian, and he was a senior because he was Moses' father-in-law. And remember that actually his visit to Moses improved him because he offered him leadership tips. And so leaders, can I mention again, leaders, 
when you get there to your people, those are your subordinates, there's something and you go in good spirit like Jethro came with a good spirit. He rejoiced over what God had done with them. And so you go in good spirit and rejoice over what people had done and encourage them. And we pray the Lord that actually Jethro encouraged Moses here. And so a leader, you go and encourage your juniors. You go and encourage your subordinates and speak to them some tips of how to go about it. And Jethro did exactly that to encourage his son-in-law. And one other thing that actually you discover in this is that many times you will find um, in-laws finding trouble. When I mention in-laws, their mothers-in-law, their fathers-in-law, their sons-in-law, their daughters-in-law, their brothers-in-law, their sisters-in-law, many of those things. And many times people don't have good relationships with those people that are in-laws. They don't know why these days actually it is, people now have modified it to be my mother in love, my father in love, you know. Because actually that is just, that's what it's meant to be anyway. But actually Jethro, the father-in-law, challenges the relationships, the bad relationships that exist between in-laws. And it's, it's bad sometimes when you hear the son-in-law, the father-in-law, speaking several things against each other. But we pray that actually Jethro's just just story will improve us and improve us indeed. So, friends, may God enable us to discover some lesson here. May God enable us to discover that it is important to improve yourself and to improve the relationship with other people. And I've just been talking about in-laws here. One other thing that we discovered that actually Moses briefed his father-in-law. He gave accountability of what God had done. Actually, gave, told him that actually while we were there, this is what God did. He saved us from the, from the Egyptians. He enabled us to cross the, 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 river, the, the Red Sea. He enabled us to, you know, those things. He enabled us to fight and conquer accountability and giving reports. Giving reports about the things that we've already done. And it's important to give out an accountability. Friends, be held accountable for what you do and report. And so we find this in this portion of scripture. And I compared this with Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Remember the time when Jesus sent the apostles, the disciples to go and preach. And um, in chapter 6 of... Um, Mark, Mark chapter 6, verse 30, the Bible says that the disciples, the apostles returned. Jesus had sent them to go and preach. When you read the, the, the previous, I mean, the earlier chapter, verses, uh, he had sent them. Now in verse 30, the Bible said that the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Giving accountability. Report something. Child at school, you will carry a report home. Yes, a worker, you'll give a report of what you are doing. The reason why we have appraisals, so actually, I mean, you report, you say, I've done this, I've done this, and then your boss also will say, yeah, yeah, you have done this, and you know, reporting. So Moses gave a report of what he had done, and his father-in-law was happy about that. That's why the reason why, um, as we, we see, in the portion of scripture that Jethro rejoiced in verse 9, Exodus 18, 9, and Jethro rejoiced for all that the, the good that the Lord had done for Israel. He was not there, but he rejoiced because he had heard Moses speak it. So he speaks something. Give a report that will encourage some other person to feel good, to rejoice. Carry a good report. Carry a good report that will make your parents rejoice. That will make your wife rejoice. That will make your husband rejoice. That will make someone rejoice. Make a report. Bring, carry with you good news. Moses carried with him good news that made this man, Jethro, rejoice of what God had done for them. And then, one other thing that actually we discover is actually um, Jethro gave advice to Moses and um, he corrected where that someone can do the right thing the wrong way. 
We have read about it. We have talked about it a million times. You can be doing the right thing, but we are doing it a wrong way, and it impacts you negatively. And so, one important thing is actually um, observing and advising that if someone is doing something, the right thing, but doing it the wrong way, it also hurts. It may not bring the results that you need. You need to do the right thing the right way. And so the point that actually Jethro is giving to Moses is do the right thing in the right way. And so I appeal to us, everyone that is interested in seeing this and hearing this, myself as well, and everyone else, do the right thing in the right way. And it's the whole message also here. And so one thing that actually Jethro gives to Moses is a delegation of authority prove effective leadership here by delegating and Jethro advised him to separate, to divide up the people and as they continued uh, serving, as they continued sojourning, as they continued traveling, that actually he would sit on the judgment seat to judge bigger cases. And I think this is where um, our governments find something to do. You have the lower courts, you know, handling this, and then they appeal to a, to a higher court, and then they like that. And so up to the, to the apex, the highest court in the land. And so this is what Jethro, the adversary, actually gave to Moses. That actually let those petty, petty cases be solved by at that level. And then let these ones also be, if they are defeated here, refer. And then if they are defeated here, refer. And this is actually important, delegation of authority. So may God help us today to remember doing the right thing in the right way. And Jethro gives this advice to Moses because he worn out himself. Many times we find ourselves worn out because we want to do everything in every way. And therefore we find ourselves broken down. And so when you delegate, you ask another person to do something. You see, it's also self-care. Trust people. You know, delegate some work. You know, and when you're delegated, also be faithful in the work that you are doing. And so in life, we need to be open to advice. And I want to appeal to young people, be open to advice. Be open to advice. And whether you are a leader of how many, be open to advice. And Moses was open to advice. And so it is so because we need another person's perspective. We're not everything. We're not omnipotent like God is. We are not omniscient like God is all-knowing. We're not omnipotent like God is almighty. We need another person's perspective. And so Moses listened to what Jethro told him. And write advice, correct advice helpful advice and you also who come to advise who gave who come to give another perspective let it be a helpful perspective and so it will move things forward but someone can come to give you another perspective which is derailing you from the right and so Jethro gives us a very good example so um, we need to accomplish many things and may God enable you may God enable us to learn something from Jethro. And Jethro, I want to let you know, when you find any Hebrew name, any name in the Bible will have its meaning. And Jethro means excellence. It means preeminence, abundance, something overflowing. And so he was a father, Moses' father-in-law, and when he came with this piece of advice, it was for purposes of excellence. And so I pray for you that for purposes of excellence that you work with Excel. And take Jethro to be your yardstick and make other people hear about the good that you're doing. So do good. And may God enable you to do good. Like he enabled Moses to do good and everybody celebrated. Everybody. I mean, you know, Jethro rejoiced. And my prayer is, whatever I'm doing, whatever you're doing, may it make someone rejoice. Bring happiness. Bring joy to your family. Bring joy to God. 
And so that God will look down and say, yes, my son, my daughter is doing great things. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so may God grant us wisdom in our generation to work better, to work well. Moses lives as an example, Jethro lives as an example, and especially in the area of family, may we uphold family virtues. In as much as we are busy, but family is also important. And the reason why Jethro carried these people and said, let's go. So know your wife, know your family, your wife, husband, your children, and the in-law relationships and so that we shall all flow together in the name of jesus christ our lord amen <music>